busy, but I'd like a beer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Make it two. I got enough dirt in my craw to cause a landslide. This town's pretty quiet, as always like this. We serve drinks, not gab. No harm, Mint. We're just looking for a fellow by the name of Joe Bruder. You know him? It's two beers, that's 20 cents. Let's start all over again. Randy Bruder's a friend of ours. We're looking for his paw. You know where we can find him? If you want Randy's paw, you have to find him. I ain't his keeper. Thank you. Well, bartender's an example of the people of this town. I don't think I'm gonna like it here. Yeah. Hold it down. Quiet as it is around here, I got a feeling that we're being listened to and watched. Yeah, well, I got a feeling we better get on our horses and get out of here. I thought this whole idea of yours was crazy to begin with. Go ahead. It's my doings. I'll see it through. I have a chance without me. Your odds aren't much better with me along, but I'll stick around. Let's go outside and take another look around. Paul. Howdy. We're looking for Mr. Bruce. I say, we're looking for Mr. Bruce. Hi, Mr. Bruder. Oh. Well, uh, Mr. Bruder, we're looking for a mite older than you are. Hey, wait a minute. He must be one of Randy's brothers, either Cass or Willie. He was always talking about yeah, it. Yeah, that's right. Patty. Nobody sent for you, and nobody wants you around. Why don't you just get back on your horses and get? Now. Or a little sooner. <laughs> well, they, they're Randy's brothers, all right. You know, he, he was always saying there was no way to ever sneak yeah, up on him, catch yeah. him unawares. Yeah. We rode a long way to see Randy's paw, and that's what we're gonna do. You gonna be stubborn, huh? Well, stubborn get you shot. So you better get. And I mean now. You being a mite hasty, ain't you? My boys ain't too mannerly. Seems to me that the polite thing is to at least ask a man's name before we run him out of town. I'm uh, Bud York. I love Leroy, Gabe Leroy. Jake Marley, my bartender up the street, said you two looking for me. You, uh, Joe Bruder? Well, that's who you're looking for, eh? Boys, uh, you know, it's uh, plumb rude for you to uh, treat a stranger like this. And you, 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 you didn't even ask their names. We didn't have to, Paul. They said they were friends of Randy's, so we figured they might be lying. You couldn't figure your way out of an empty rain barrel. My boy, there's a little hot head in there, always trying to protect me. Hope you won't hold that against him. No, no, no. It ain't good for the soul to hold a grudge. You want a blabber? We can go up to my place. It's some cooler. Fine, whatever, whatever you like. Yeah. Take care of their horses. This way. mention your names. But he never did say just what you had to do with the trouble he's in. Uh, if you're his friends, uh, I figure you won't tell me. Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, see, <clears throat> me and old Gabe here, we ran into Randy over at Pineville. 
and we was sort of sitting around chewing the fat and having a drink or two, and, and old Randy had him a great notion. All right, hold it there. All right, it's coming now. I'm going to tell you when to drop it. Where do you want us, Randy? Why'd you take it over there, uh, back here with me, Leroy? Okay, now. All right, hold it. Don't make any mistakes. Boy, where'd that come from? Now come out of there with your hands up. All right, everybody out. Just nobody will move and nobody will get hurt. You say Randy took the money belt from a man bigger than him. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, he's way bigger. He's bigger than old Buddy. Hmm? Yeah, oh, yeah. That makes me proud. <laughs> I tell you, that boy, he, he don't know the meaning of fear. No, he doesn't. He kept... Well, he kept telling me that uh, he wanted to do things on his own. <laughs> you know, a man uh, can't fault the boy for wanting to leave home. I, I don't approve of killing, though. That gets you into rope trouble. Right around the neck. Yeah, well, Randy didn't kill that driver. It was just a flesh wound. Yeah, Nick. Nick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Randy said. But uh, hearing you say it takes the weight off my mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got to get this place uh, cleaned up, huh? Look at that dust. Uh, one of these days, um, I might just have a customer. My living quarters is upstairs. Salt wants a decent place to live. And uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't have a few comforts uh, if he's smart enough to get them. Well, sit, 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 sit down, okay. sit down. Just uh, make yourself home. One thing uh, you didn't mention how much was in the money belt. Well, uh, didn't Randy tell you about that? Well, could be I just remember is why I'm asking. Well, it was 51000 Fair piece of money. <laughs> Worth drinking, too. Oh, thank you. You know, it seems to me that I did hear that figure once before. But one thing else you didn't mention. If y'all got away so slick, how come Randy got herself thrown in the Virginia City Jail? Well, uh, we can just tell you what we heard, that's all. <clears throat> yeah, I see, uh... You see, when, when, when Randy didn't show up at the meeting place, and we, we naturally were concerned about it, and, uh, we just started asking around. Yeah. Just riders and freighters and such as that. Uh, we didn't want to get that close to Virginia City, you see. Uh, it turns out the man, the man that Randy stole the money from, well, wasn't as dumb as he looked. And then the next thing you know, Randy was in a Virginia City jail. I swear that boy was born on an unlucky star. Did you hear when he goes to trial? Well, it'll probably be a 
week and a half to two weeks. As soon as the circuit judge gets there. Stage robbing. Nobody really hurt. They shouldn't go too hard on a gentle boy like Randy. A wonderful boy. You know, you know that, that, that he didn't say a word about where the money was? Oh, that makes me feel proud. I raised him right. <laughs> yeah. He did say that he gave it to you. That's what you said. I ain't saying a word. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> you see, Mr. Bruder, old Gabe and me figure that two-thirds of that money's ours. Oh, man, but Buck and I did work for it. I, yeah. I'd hate to think that, that Randy's father would cheat his partners. Joe's Bruder never cheated nobody, do you hear? Just uh, don't. Don't push at me. I gotta ponder on this. I, I'm a man that likes to think on things. Uh, just uh, leave me alone with my thoughts. You can uh, hang around if you like. We, uh, we talk later. Not only ask us about the money, I think he's going to keep on asking questions, stalling. There was four of them. Old man, two sons, and a bartender. They could have some more stashed around. Mr. Bruder's a weird old goat, isn't he? Yeah. Imagine him thinking his kid's just an honest, hard-working young boy. Yeah. As I recall, his partners didn't think that. Double-crossed us. We've been sitting here for three days. He's off somewhere laughing his head off. Well, don't just sit there. Say something. I'll say it. Put your hands up. You're the one on the stage. Hold it. Keep an eye on him. Sure. How bad is it? Bad. All right, buddy. Where's the money? Might as well tell us, because you ain't going to live to spend it. Is that bad, huh? That's right. You're going fast. Where is it? I, I, I guess I better then. Never even got to smell that money. You know, Randy, he took it over to his pa and his brothers so they could watch it. So we could split it up. Where? A ghost town over on Windflat. How many brothers? Two of them. Cass and Willie. I never, never seen him. Never even seen Randy till the night before the holdup. What's your name? Why well, I'm saying have my name on my grave. I never had my name on nothing before. You carve it real nice, huh? Gabe Leroy. Ah. All right, Leroy, get up on your feet. Come on. I'm a, I'm a mortal wounded man. I can't get up. There ain't nothing wrong with you except a little flesh wound, a big scare. Now, get up. Come on. You tricked me. Something like that. Come on, let's get him to the sheriff. Yeah, hey, Bill, take him back to that land shack. Keep him tied up when we get back. Right. What are you talking about? Get back? From where? We're going after that money. On a horse. Come no, on. not a horse. The name is York, Leroy. York, Leroy. What about him? Well, first off, Paul, uh, maybe can I... get eating all the red ones. Uh, maybe Cass and me uh done a dumb thing and trying to run York and Leroy out of town. But we know why they come. They want that money. Why not? The Randy's partners, ain't they? Fair's fair, ain't it? Not with Randy stuck in jail. He can't spend it. Why should they? That's right, Pa. We don't know them nothing. Now, Cass and me, we're your own flesh and blood, not them. You want to give away that money? Well, that's fine, but you give it to us. Look. Look. Randy did the thinking. York and Leroy helped do the work. And you two are grabbing with both hands. 
you had your say. I'll keep it in mind. I don't know who made this beer, but they must have left the soap in it. Yeah. Sure don't take much of that to get all the man wants, does it? Uh -huh. They forgot. Two beers. Yeah, yeah, we do. 20 cents. Two more of them we don't have to worry about. Yeah. What it comes right down to is this. I have to be paid if I'm going to take your case. Cash. No promises. Well, my pa will pay you. Fine. Send him over to my office. I don't live in Virginia City. When that lawyer finishes in there, let him out. I want to get a cup of coffee and something to eat. Paul here. Somebody will tell him and I who come a-running with the money in his hand. When he does, send him to my office. Deputy. All right. Bixley's a good lawyer. Too bad he won't help you. He will. He changed his mind. He's coming back. You no, know, it, it ain't like my boys to ride out without saying a word. Well, you know, they haven't exactly been too friendly towards us. I have a feeling they don't want you to give us our fair share of the whole of money. Why, Mr. LaRoy. I do believe you're trying to trap an old man. I ain't ever said that I had any hold-up money. Uh, you ain't said you didn't, either. Well, then I ain't said nothing at all, have I? <laughs> but uh, I am thinking on it, and uh, things is beginning to fall into place. Uh, tonight or tomorrow morning, just about do it. Look, Mr. Bruder, it's our money. Now, there ain't no need in holding us up. Well, do you want a quick answer, or do you want the right one? Uh, well, just hold on. But I mean, we've got no complaints so far. Mr. Root has been very nice, and uh, I think it's just that he's a, he's just a methodical man. T tonight will be just fine. Yes, sir, Mr. Leroy. C call me Gabe. Gabe. And I like that word, methodical. That's me. And you have a very discerning eye. You know, uh, it helps my thinking every once in a while to just ride out and let the Wind blows the smell of this place off me. Uh, you just make yourselves at home. I won't be gone long. Come on. Just to blow the smell off of him, he better hope for a tornado. <laughs> yeah. You know, by my count, I think there's just three of us left in town. You, me, and the bartender. Yeah. Could be a trap. It could be, but I don't think so. He did say make ourselves at home. <laughs> Check the other room. in Denver. Well, you see the other stuff we got, boss. Biggest haul we've made in months. A and no trouble. Now, the freight wagon's right where you said it'd be. I need a drink. Well, you earned it. Go get it. Everybody, go get it! <laughs> Look at this. Hey, they, uh, 
friends of mine. Just go on with your drinking. You. Have one on the house. Oh, thank you. Yes, I see where you get all your customers. Uh, <laughs> kind of a, a mutual back scratching. I, I, I pay them well, but I get it all back. Uh, they'll go on celebrating like this all night. <laughs> uh, speaking of night, it ain't but just a couple hours till dark. Here do you come again, Mr. Nudging me about that money that I haven't said that I had. How's the matter? Uh, with all this wagon, all this stuff, I'd be mighty selfish to hog it all to myself. Counting chickens uh, ain't always a good idea. But... Oh, Clem, come on. Good afternoon, Ben. I got bad news for you. Randy Bruder broke out of jail. It was my fault. I'm not proud, but I can't deny it either. We lost his tracks miles back. Mm -hmm. I figured I'd better get right over here and warn you. Randy knows Hoss is the only witness against him. Yeah. Well, Hoss and little Joe and Bill White are looking for the other two somewhere around Pineville. Pineville? That's halfway to Wind Flats. Randy's home. His folks used to live there. Well, it's only a ghost town now. Well, Randy'd know that territory pretty well, wouldn't he? You bet he would. I think it's worth a look. All right, really. Is that you, Mr. York? Yeah. Well, come on up. Looks like us three's the only sober ones in town. Yeah, we, uh, we noticed that, Mr. Broder. <laughs> well, you just make yourself at home. You didn't join him. How come? Because you said you was going to split up the money and we took your word for it. It's time. The black one. Well, my word is good. And the clock has run out on me. You know, it hasn't been an easy decision, all that money. But even so, I think I wouldn't have slept right if I hadn't done the right thing by Randy's partners. Neither would we. <laughs> <laughs> but 51,000 pile of money. I think we ought to talk about it first. Well, uh, what, what, what is there to talk about? <laughs> well, about divvying up. Let's see, uh, three shares at 15,000 apiece. Uh, and that leaves 6,000 over. That ought to go to Randy on account of he's in jail. Well, I, I guess that's fair enough. Well, of course it's fair. Then there's me. Care taking the money all this time. I ought to get something for that. Oh, yeah. Say 2,000 apiece out of your shares. Yeah. That leaves on. That's th uh, thir 13,000. That's right. And you are a bright boy. <laughs> Thank you. 13, an unlucky number. So how about 12 for each of you? Well, it's good. It's an even dozen. Done. It is a pleasure to do business with you. Now, you boys, listen to reason. Gabe, would you take hold of that? Hmm? Huh? Mr. Yeah. Uh, Mr. York. Yes, sir. Now, lift. Easy. And away she goes. Down now. <laughs> now who, who would have thought of putting it in there? <laughs> Nobody up to now. <laughs> Hold it. Oh. Not yet. Well, where in thunder have you been? Where have I been? I've been to Pineville. Now, that's the place that these two louts claim to come from. That is, if they're Bud York and Gabe Leroy. And now we're going to find out one way 
or another. Cass! Pa, I want you to meet Mrs. Bud York. gonna hurt you. So you just spit it out. And you ain't never seen these two fellas before, have you? Two years and it's come to this. Two long years of marriage, hoping you'd Keep just one of your promises, and knowing all the time you wouldn't. Scratching for a dollar and then watching you drink it up. Two long years of hell! Oh, Bud, where have you been? Well, I, uh... Why, well, I, I didn't mean to. I was... I was... You're wrong again, ain't you? Trying to cheat your own brother's friends. Now, would you take hold of this? And you, with this hand, take hold of that. And would you put the money belt downstairs in the safe? Uh, get, get out of my sight, both of you. You and your stupid scheme. Oh, shut up! Bud, you ought to be so ashamed of yourself. Sweet little girls like this is hard to come by. But don't you worry, Mrs. York. Happy days are ahead for you. There's no, no more scratching for a dollar, let me tell you that. Hey, I'll, I'll go along with that, Mr. Bruder. Why, why, why don't we uh, get the money out of the safe and split it up, and we'll be on our way to Pineville. Well, is that all you can think of, Leroy? Getting your grabby hands on that loot? Well, Haven't you got a passing thought of charity and kindness for this delicate and weary woman? You'd have her go all the way to Pineville tonight? Yeah. Never! Hey, <laughs> look at old Bud there. <laughs> he ain't got any more romance in him than a croaking tree toad. <laughs> <laughs> a man and his wife ought to be together, especially when they haven't seen each other for a spell. Yeah. Uh, you two will have my bedroom tonight. Gabe. Huh? You and me will sleep out here. Uh, that sofa is right comfortable. I'll take the chair. Miss York, you'll like my bedroom just fine. You see, my boys got most of my furniture from a freight wagon just loaded with hotel supplies. Thank you. Well, come on. Come on. Uh, Mr. Bruder, I... No, there's no need to thank me. I, I was young once. No, I wish my wife had lived. She would have cottoned to my bedroom. Makes you feel good, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I bet they got just a million things to talk about. <laughs> oh, I bet that they do. <laughs> Saved our hides out there, and I want you to know I appreciate it. But I want to know why. Well, since uh, Bud and me was married, he he never left me alone for so much as a day. 
always around, you know, uh, mean and suspicious. He never left me of his own accord, not for three whole weeks. So I, I reckon he's gone. <sighs> Someday maybe I'll, I'll try to shed a tear for him. A wife should do that much, I guess. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, big man. So, why'd I pretend you was Bud? Well, maybe because I'm ornery. That uh, Willie and Cass, they ain't nice. They practically forced me to come with them. It, uh, it pleasured me to make fools of them. <laughs> Besides, uh, why give you away till I know which way the wind is blowing? Yeah, but you run a mighty gamble. There's two of us. You think the other one, the good-looking one, would have been married to the likes of me? Sure, I took a chance, but not on the man. Oh, so you, uh, you just chose the ugly one, right? I won't deny it. Now that I see you close up, ugly ain't the right word. Your eyes ain't ugly, and... And you ain't got no ugly lines around your mouth. Well, uh, ma'am, the light ain't too good in this room, but I appreciate you saying it anyhow. But if you're up to no good, passing yourself off as Bud, I, I can change my mind mighty quick. A loud scream will bring those brooders on the run. Something tells me I won't be screaming. Well, thank goodness. But, ma'am, you made the right choice, and I'll tell you why. You see, it all started about five weeks ago. And we'd had this big cattle drive, see, and, and I had all the sale money on me. It belongs to a lot of nice folks. And I was on the stagecoach with it, and... Well, I should have guarded it better, but I didn't. Fact is, I was dozing. And while I was dozing... <laughs> Well, me and my little brother Joseph was just about ready to lay our hands on that money when Kaz and Willie and you showed up. Well, what made you back off? You could have still jumped them. Well, you was with them, ma'am. You, you might have got hurt. You and your brother. Joe, you said? <sighs> there ain't many in the world like you. At least, not in my world. Oh. You best quit calling me ma'am. You do that with them around and... Well... My name's Katie. Katie? <laughs> well, ma'am, Katie, that has a nice ring to it. And speaking of ring, you got a nice wallop, too. <laughs> well, I figured I had to. That Willie was mighty suspicious. But we fooled him. That's the important thing. Yeah. And we gotta keep on fooling them. Never slept in a bed as grand as this. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll just bed down here over in the chair. I expected you to. And I'll thank you to turn your back. I ain't too used to this sort of thing, ma'am. Uh, Katie. Well, you'll have a wife one day. You'll get used to it. Mrs. York. 
Just a minute, Mr. Bruder. He sees you in that chair. He'll know something ain't right. Quick, get in here. Come on. Uh, you can come in now. Uh, I, I don't uh, want to bother you, but uh, well, I, I wanted to make uh, sure that you, you're warm enough. For, well, it it uh, could get uh, cold before morning. Uh, and it'll pleasure you uh, to know that I'm planning a real breakfast feast for you. I, I've got some new uh, silver that I want to try. Uh, uh, genuine uh, sterling. And, uh... It's very nice of you, Mr. Bruder. That ain't a pretty sight. <laughs> it reminds me of when, uh, when I was young and uh, Marty and me was just uh, starting out. <laughs> well, I don't want to bore you, but uh, you are a lucky man, Bud York, having a woman like you got. Fine woman. Standing. By you. By you. Standing up by you and uh, like that. Uh, you're lucky. Ma'am? Uh, Miss Katie, what what's the matter? They ain't no need in that. Sometimes I that's the only need a woman feels. I know. It's foolish, maybe, to wash away the hurt or, or them dreams that ain't never gonna come true. What, what Pa Bruder said. He thinks you're lucky having a woman like me. Like me. Well, why couldn't it be the other way around? For real. I mean, why couldn't I have a man like you? Oh, Katie, they ain't much to me. You said yourself I was ugly. No. No. All my life, I, I've been walking hand in hand with ugliness. Nobody knows that better than me. I mean... Being ugly is, deep down, a, a terrible, festering thing that can eat the soul right out of a person. No, Huss. You ain't ugly. I ain't got time for that now, Paul. The law been here? No, no, no. The law ain't been here. Well, they will soon. Now, I ain't got to have grub, and I need a fresh horse, Paul. And I need my money, because I'm heading for Mexico. Well, shut up. But don't be jumpy, boy. Hey, you are home, safe and sound, in the bosom of your family. And, well, hey, hey, put that gun down. Hey, that man, he, he's your partner. Partner? Yes. That is Gabe Leroy. Ooh. Hey, hey. Don't move. Randy, have you lost your senses? Well, somebody around here has. That's not Gabe Leroy. That's one of them Cartwrights that tracked me down. Now, shut that gun, Cartwright. If that ain't Gabe Leroy, who's that other man? 
If he's a big fella, Paul, he's the other card, right? The one to put me in jail. They took me in with lies. Rotten lies. Paul, the three riders come in. It might be the law. Hey, Randy, what's going on here, Paul? Well, don't just stand there. Cover them. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Two of them's law, the other one's Ben Cartwright. Oh, I've been a blind fool. <laughs> Any chance to get a meal? No. How about a cup of coffee? Boys start celebrating early around here. Late, Master. I'm still working on last night. <laughs> Fifteen cents. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Looking for a man named a Bruder. I was told that I'm never heard of him. Could be the wrong town. Yeah, or a cover-up. Whichever they sure don't like strangers. I'd say. It sorrows me that you were in on this. I took you for a gentle lady. She is a lady, Bruder. She wasn't in on it. Leave her alone. And oh, don't forget it was your sons that brought her here. None of that. Look, too much talk. I got lawmen down there, and I got to be moving. Gentle down, boy. There ain't nobody in that saloon going to tell the law anything. Oh, that's better. This coffee could stand up without the cup. It's the truth. A little sugar might help. How many? Give me two. Thank you, Bill. It's new. Sterling silver. It's strange. You two have gotten me into this mess. Sure strange, ain't it, Joe? Man digs his own grave, buries himself, and then blames the shovel. There's gonna be a grave right enough. Two of them. Randy! Randy, that's wild talk. You know I don't approve of killing. Neither do you. Yes, yes, yes. You go downstairs and take a look at the street. If you see him by sneaking in, yell. Now, what are you going to do with these three? And the law, how are you going to get rid of them? I'm thinking on it. I have been robbing for 35 years, never missed a trick. And I ain't ever killed nobody. Randy, maybe you ain't dumb, but you sure are slow to grasp. Got the money, it took a little luck, but we got it. Well, that's the best news I've heard in weeks. Ms. York here was a big help, Paul. This is my Paul, Ms. York. Ms. York, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah? Mr. Van Cartwright. That's right. Uh, these two, they your boys? Yes, they are. Well, you raised them right.
There's uh, no use of us uh, waiting until they fetch out Cass and Welly. Uh, we're going to jail. We might as well get started. It sorrows me that I didn't do a better job on you. I'll get the other two. Yeah. Well, New York, I, I didn't feel like I could tell you before, but I can now. Your husband didn't run out on me. We got him tied up in the lion shack. We're going to take him to the law. That means prison. Probably. Well, it might be the saving of him. I'm going to hope it is. Yeah. Well, I, uh... I guess they're waiting on us now. Hope things go better for you from now on, Katie. Busy, but I'd like a beer, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Make it two. I got enough dirt in my craw to cause a landslide. This town's pretty quiet. It's always like this. We serve drinks, not gab. No harm meant. We're just looking for a fellow by the name of Joe Bruder. You know him? It's two beers. That's 20 cents. Let's start all over again. Randy Bruder's a friend of ours. We're looking for his paw. You know where we can find him? If you want Randy's paw, you have to find him. I ain't his keeper. Thank you. Well, the bartender's an example of the people of this town. I don't think I'm gonna like it here. Yeah. Hold it down. They're not too bright. Uh, not like uh, Randy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Randy did mention your name. But he never did say just what you had to do with the trouble he's in. Uh, if you're his friends, uh, I figure you want to tell me. Hey, yeah, yeah. Well, see, <clears throat> me and old Gabe here, we ran into Randy over at Pineville. And we was sort of sitting around chewing the fat and having a drink or two. And, and old Randy had him a great notion. All right, hold it there. All right, it's coming now. I'm going to tell you when to drop it. Where do you want us, Randy? Why'd you take it over there, uh, back here with me, Leroy? Okay, now. All right, hold it. Don't make any mistakes. The quiet as it is around here, I got a feeling that we're being listened to and watched. Yeah, well, I got a feeling we got to get on our horses and get out of here. I thought this whole idea of yours was crazy to begin with. Go ahead. It's my doings. I'll see it through. I have a chance without me. Your odds aren't much better with me along, but I'll stick around. Let's go outside and take another look around. Well, Mr. Bruder? Oh. Well, uh, Mr. Bruder, we're looking for a mite older than you are. 
Hey, wait a minute. He must be one of Randy's brothers, either Cass or Willie. He was always talking about it. Yeah, him. that's right. Patty. Nobody sent for you, and nobody wants you around. Why don't you just get back on your horses and get? Now. Or a little sooner. <laughs> well, they, they're Randy's brothers, all right. You know, he, he was always saying there was no way to ever sneak yeah. up on him, catch yeah. him unawares. Yeah. We rode a long way to see Randy's paw, and that's what we're going to do. You going to be stubborn, huh? Well, stubborn get you shot and cooler. Fine, whatever, whatever you like. Yeah. Take care of their horses. This way. My boys ain't too mannerly. Seems to me that the polite thing is to at least ask a man's name before we run out of town. I'm uh, Bud York. A little Leroy, Gabe Leroy. Jake Marley, my bartender up the street, said you two looking for me. You, uh, Joe Bruder? Well, that's who you're looking for, eh? Boys, uh, you know, it's a uh, plum rude for you to uh, treat a stranger like this. And you, 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 you didn't even ask their names. We didn't have to, Pa. They said they were friends of Randy's, so we figured they might be lying. You couldn't figure your way out of an empty rain barrel. My boys, there's a little hot-headed. They're always trying to protect me. Hope you won't hold that against them. No, no, no. It ain't good for the soul to hold a grudge. You want to blab her? We can go up to my place. It's some. 